during the Cold War, uh, when we were reacting to the fact that Indonesia teetered on the edge of moving into the communist bloc in the middle of 1960s. Uh, and this is when President Suharto emerged as the president of Indonesia. So we supported President Suharto largely because he was bringing stability and economic growth to Indonesia, even though we disapproved of some of the repressive measures that he used in order to maintain stability. I have to admit that uh, life was actually much more stable yeah, because everything was so predictable, everything was uh, uh, you know, organized very well under the regime. Uh, but there was no freedom. Yeah? There was very little freedom. Uh, there was some freedom, but very little. And there was no room for, to criticize the government. There was no room to criticize the corruption that was taking place around us all the time. It was a time when we had very uh, strong political stability uh, at the expense of uh, democracy uh, and uh, very high growth uh, at the time. Uh, and then uh, the size of our middle class grew. But so, unfortunately, did uh, the practice of what was called KKN, corruption, collusion, and nepotism. And in fact, uh, this is in the end what brought the Suharto era down. Most people around President Suharto had felt that he had served his time and should be stepping down, but he didn't want to. So he got himself re-elected through these controlled elections in 1997. But 1997 was when the Asian financial crisis hit. And essentially, the legitimacy of his rule had been based on rapid economic growth. People said that uh, enough is enough, uh, something needed to be changed. Uh, we had enough, uh, we had long-term stability, but this was not enough. Uh, we wanted more freedom. We wanted a voice on our own. Yeah. So we had uh, our own period of democratic transition, and we had our own period of unstable democratic transition. I think the period between 1998 and 2001 and 2002 were the most difficult.